you. That's a good song. Oh. Yeah. So we're going to have the city elections before the primaries. For sure. We can't we can't alter the city elections, I guess, huh? No, we are going to have city Yo. elections. All right, folks. Before. Uh, the sheriff's race is pretty important, like I always tell y'all. So tonight, John Sisson, hey, Sison, how do you pronounce it? Sisson. Sisson and Sheriff Greg Hamlin, appreciate you coming down. You met everybody, right? Yes. Of course. Yes. So I guess we'll just start off with, uh, how about a bio? Oh. Tell us about where you come from, who you are, and stuff like that. All right. Well, I'm John Sisson. I was raised in Austin, Texas. Uh, came here when I was 14 years old from Coppers Cove, Texas. I was an Army brat. I uh, went to Crockett High School. Uh, in 1977, I joined the Sheriff's Department, worked as a corrections officer for a year, and then from there I went to the Austin Police Department where I spent 30 years. I was a patrolman for 15, well, line patrolman for 10 years. I was in SWAT for two, uh, major narcotics for three, then I made line sergeant, which I was a line sergeant for eight and a half, then I made lieutenant. I was a lieutenant for five. Uh, that's about it, I guess. And you decided to run for sheriff. Yes, sir. Well, I, I pre right now work for Precinct 3 as a deputy constable. Oh, okay. Learning the civil side of everything. So. Precinct 3, Temple. Uh, sheriff Hamilton. Good to see you again, sir. You this is, uh, what, second, third appearance already. Second. I do appreciate you came out and talked to my group out there at the Austin Energy Building that night. That was very good. For some of the audience that might not know you, why don't you fill us in on your background? Well, I'm Greg Hamilton. I am the sitting Travis County Sheriff. Uh, I've got 28 years in law enforcement. I worked two years as corrections officer, eight years uh, in, the, in the patrol division. And then after that, I was appointed chief of law enforcement over the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission, uh, which I was over the state of Texas. I had 55 offices uh, throughout the state of Texas. And after that, I uh, decided to to run for sheriff after the sitting sheriff uh, asked me to consider, and I ran, and I've been here for the last eight years. Ten four, well, thank you, sir. <coughs> Don't anything in on that, Greg? Shall we start with some of our fun questions? Like I suppose ice is the top top topic for that yes. y'all will disagree on. Now, of course, I always appreciated the sheriff having the ice in there, because some of the people on my side say, well, if they're in the country illegally, then they're already breaking the law. Why not throw them out? But I understand there's a lot to it, so I guess that's where your stance on it to start with. Yes, sir. And tell us why. Uh, what, what do you plan to do about it? Well, what I plan to do about it is that uh, there's two parts of se secured co communities within the federal government. Secured communities, one part of it is the processing of information where whenever anybody's booked into jail, anybody, their fingerprints are taken. The fingerprints are sent to the FBI. Every time I've been booked in, that's what's happened. And if, uh, if it's determined by the FBI that they're uh, here illegally, they're not citizens of the United States, then those fingerprints are sent to the uh, Department of Homeland Security. And then Homeland Security, once they uh, confirm that a person is undocumented, those uh, a request is sent to the Sheriff's Department to hold that individual. Now, as Sheriff, I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, honor that request for everybody. I will honor the request for the serious criminals, the felons, the violent criminals, the sex offenders, the people that cause family violence, the repeated DWIs, but people with uh, non-criminal histories and people with non-criminal violations, no, I'm not going to retain those for, for ICE. Well, if they're already thrown in jail, uh, okay, anyway, you can Sheriff, right. we'll come back to because we do got questions about, like, okay. what do you define as a criminal, but anyway. Well, first of all, ICE is not in the jail, and they, I mean, as far as they have an office in the jail, and they never have had an office in the jail. Um, as far as uh, the, the secured communities that John talked about, he missed a step. Uh, the fingerprints are taken, they're sent to DPS. DPS sends them to the FBI, and the FBI sends all the prints over to secured community. At that time, if there's a hit, uh, on, on the fingerprints where uh, the, the only, the only um, ID that secure communities have is when uh, either somebody from ICE had to be dealing with that particular individual. They had to have some kind of contact. If they've never had any contact with ICE, they are not in secure communities. Um, when, when I took office, I raised my hand that I would uh, uh, enforce the laws of the state and of the United States, and it's required that uh, you honor these detainers. Well, that makes, yeah, you're right, because when you, I know on some of your website it says it's federal law, 
Oh no, that was in uh, the info you sent, the PDF file. That WordPress file. Uh, well, I guess this this has been the topic of confusion and for and, many years and not understanding, because I've heard both sides. Uh, as LULAC, we've we've met with Sheriff Hamilton and then we've met with John as a candidate to discuss this one issue. And the more we discuss it, in my opinion, the more confusing it gets. Because uh, one, uh, is it a mandate <coughs> or is it a policy? There's a big difference. Uh, we know of other communities in the United States that have not adhered or, or complied with the uh, detention element of it because of you know, numerous reasons, cost to the taxpayers for having this individual. And I think uh, candidate Charlie Baird also talked about uh, the, the rule of uh, innocent to proven guilty. And in this case, uh, once they're booked, the one question that is, the first question that is asked and uh, isn't where do you live? It's where were you born? And that right there starts the whole process of flagging your name to secured communities or I, uh, uh, ICE. And that's the part that I'm a little, still a bit, a bit confused. Well, hold on here a minute. Is, is that correct, Sheriff? No, that's not. Uh, I didn't think so, because they didn't ask me that. But well, th hey, but that, that's the way it was before we had secured communities. We still ask the question, where were you born? Right. Because there are certain consulates. Oh, yeah. There are certain consulates that we have to contact, regardless of whether the person that's incarcerated or not uh, 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 want us to. So by us knowing where these individuals are from, we can automatically and go and contact the consulate. But with secure communities now, everybody that goes through our jail are fingerprinted. It doesn't matter if you're from here in the United States, what everybody, because of, and that takes away the racial profiling aspect. Everybody is getting, getting uh, fingerprinted. And then at that particular time, those fingerprints are sent to DPS, DPS, because we're taking fingerprints already, sent to DPS, sent to FBI, then sent to Homeland Security. But when you, the last time you were, you were down, visited the castle, were you asked where were you born or where do you live? I was about half drunk. I mean, no, you didn't pick me up, did you? Uh, no, no. no, I did. No, actually, uh, there's a big difference. Uh, they had my driver's license, and they did the old. Is, is this your correct address here? At, uh, you know how they, they they wait for you to answer. Everybody that comes through our jail is asked where you born. Right. Yeah. Right. My question is before you had eyes and I all these images before 9/11. Let's say before 9/11, because all this maniac was created. That was after 9/11. The question wasn't, where yeah. were you born? It's, where do you live? No, he, he did ask me, uh, are you from Austin? Well, but yeah, but that's not saying, where were you born? That's a big difference. I, because I, I think on the book and sheet, it does say, if you're a United States citizen, you yeah. have to indicate whether you are or not. I believe so. Yeah, I believe you're correct there. Is that correct, Sheriff? And I think that's just uh, for statistics. They ask where where are you born, and if you, United States uh, is one of the ones listed right. on there, then you you will check that. See, because if I say I'm born in Mexico, then my name I'm automatically goes to secure communities to learn no. if I'm here. No. Well, this is the information we got when uh, the sheriff was, uh, was a, uh, very cooperative in allowing us to go through a trial booking at uh, Travis County. And uh, I and James Kerr, another attorney with LULAC, went through the process. And we, we asked these questions. Uh, and uh, that was the, the responses that we got. Can I, can I respond to that? Mm -hmm. well, I've done a lot of research on this. You know, he's the sheriff in the jail. Of course, you know, they do things differently. But what my research has found is that, again, secured com communities is this two-step process. And you're right. C secured communities in one process is mandatory where you have to share the information with the FBI, the fingerprints. You have to send it to them. But you do not have to honor that request. That is not mandatory. That is up to the sheriff. And I disagree with the sheriff for holding everybody. I think we should focus mainly on the violent criminals, the people that you, me, and even the undocumented workers don't want here because it's tearing up families, it's causing the state a lot of lost revenue, it's causing social services to go up, and it's causing your tax and your taxpayer to be paying for that. The father gets deported, 
you have to pay the social service to, to provide well, the for the mother and family. children left behind? That's it. So if you were elected sheriff, what changes would you make that are, would be different than what Sheriff Hamilton has in place? What changes I will make? Do I? What changes I will make? Yes. yes I will no. not retain everybody. I will come up with a policy to decide who we're going to detain. And that's the ones that are a threat to our country, a threat to our safety, and a threat to the citizens of Austin, Travis County's quality of life. That means, you know, sex offenders, uh, suspects of family violence, uh, violent offenders, murderers, kidnappers, drug gang members, drug dealers. You know, we have to come up with policy as to who we're going to designate as a threat to our country. But so, so as a sheriff, you would have a discretion. Is that what you're yes. saying? And your discretion is not to... Retain everyone. To retain everyone. Yes. Well, I thought that was up to the judge or something. And, no, sir. And, and see, that's where I'm trying to get the mandate okay, let me, part. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me go back. All right. Once their criminal case is over with, they're, they're placed on bond or they're found not guilty or it's over with and they're done with and they're either released or they're sentenced, then you can release them. If just like anybody, you need to treat them like anybody else. Let's say you, you get a DWI or a theft and they've set a bond, you're free to go. <coughs> I understand but if, what you're saying, if the uh, but, on but if their help. ICE tells the sheriff, you got to hold it. ICE is not going to tell the sheriff. It's a request. The request does not have to be honored. All right. Can we have the yes, sheriff respond to that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's have a response. First of all, it's not a request. It's in the, in the uh, code, the ICE code. And uh, he said he did some research. He didn't do a good job. It's kind of like what he's been doing uh, he'll he'll go and do some <coughs> do some uh, research on the internet and find something that that uh, uh, agrees with him, and he doesn't go through the entire deal. He made the comment just a minute ago, or I think you made the comment, but he's made them out on the on the campaign trail that uh, uh, about Santa Clara, that the the sheriff's office uh, uh, made that decision to uh, not allow ICE in the jail. Is that correct? That's, no, that's okay, not Okay, well, what did you say? Okay. Help me out. So what Santa Clara, California did is they, they decided, they sent a letter to the director of FBI in San Francisco and said, we're opting out. We are not going to hold immigrants for you anymore. We're not going to even retain them. We're not even going to let you know that immigrants are even in our jail unless we come up with a written agreement with the federal government and only then will we hold uh, individuals for serious criminals, violent criminals, felons, just like I was talking about. Everybody else, we're going to release once their case is done, done with. And if ICE wants to go into the jail, they have to get a criminal warrant. And now I want to. That is I untrue. Wanna, I want to correct him. Well, well, I don't. Did you finish your no, response? No, well, yeah, I, I allowed him to to, okay. to do what he did. Go ahead. Uh, but ICE, I mean, as far as Santa Clara, he he's saying, uh, was it the sheriff's office that that did that? It was the state of California that had to opt out. They opted out. Okay, it was okay. the county. I don't know. It was the county. It was the Board of Ordinance. Supervisors. That's right. It was the county. It was the Board of Supervisors. The district attorney and the sheriff is upset about that. But the Board of, the, uh, board of Supervisors are the ones that run the jail there. I mean, they're responsible for the jail. As opposed to here in the state of Texas, the, the sheriff. sheriff. The sheriff is. So the DA and the sheriff uh, wrote a, a letter uh, criticizing the Board of Supervisors because they felt that, that instead of public safety that they were jeopardizing public safety. Huh. Uh, then you're right, it does get confusing. Yeah, that, that's what well, I'm saying. It, it's uh, oh, before we go on here, one more thing you say about uh, wasting precious taxpayer dollars detaining the wrong people for ICE. I thought when you detain people at the federal government, uh, reimbursed. Well, they reimburse you. Uh, there's two different type of funds. There's a SCAP fund, and then the other one is, uh, I'll, I'll, it'll come to my head. But, but they give us funds for housing, housing federal prisoners. And when they give us that money, that's, I'm talking about when, when an <coughs> individual is transporting, transporting a federal prisoner uh, from South yeah. Texas up to Dallas, and they have to stay overnight. They will put them in our jail. But we have, uh, I think that, that uh, there have been very few, uh, I think I can count on one hand, uh, individuals that have been kept longer than 48 hours, which the law mandates. The, 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 uh, the secured communities, when they put a detainer on a incarcerated inmate, they tell you that uh, it's weekends, except, exception of weekends and holidays. 
Those days don't count. Uh, you got to keep them for 48 hours. Well, as far as, as uh, uh, holding people that ICE tells you to hold. 48 hours is the max. 40, they understand that. It's 48 hours, and weekend and holidays do not count. Is there a... a, a uh, well, let me ask okay. one question. Right. Is, do you have a quality system, if you will, that oversees that 48 hour and that it does not go beyond that? Yes, we do, but sometimes it slips. Uh, it's, <laughs> and, and, and that's not just with... That's just not with, with uh, uh, ICE detentions. Uh, there's been, I, I will say again, only on one hand, where o over the last three or four years, where it's been a human error on miscalculating entering it in, into the community, I mean, into the computer. And, and you know, time served, whether they were trustees and counting those days, adding it up, they might have been trustees for three days, which you get three for one on that but they might have been just regular uh, inmates that were getting two for one. And then if, if the person that's maintaining those numbers mess up, then that's when we find out. John, you were gonna? Yes, uh, in Sarah, Santa Clara, California, you know, the board opted out because the whole county did not want <coughs> immigrants being held. He's saying the sheriff and the DA was mad. I wanna know why. Why would they be mad when it's tearing up families it's, it's causing distrust among the police. I mean, I can tell you at APD, for so many years, we finally got the trust of the Hispanic community. <coughs> you know, we had immigrants being robbed on the street and killed and laying I there. Understand that we part. had females not reporting <coughs> family violence. And now here it is again. And I think that trust needs to come back. And I think we do not need to, have to deport everybody that comes through that jail system. Only the violent criminals, the serious criminals, and it can be done. He says about my research, it wasn't my, only my research. I had many immigrant attorneys help me with this research and find this information. These guys have law degrees. So I, I'm telling him he's wrong. Uh, okay, again, uh, it's a law. It's a law. It's a law. Yeah, I was going to ask about, uh, well, I suppose that could be a, good, a big reason why so many illegals will have hit-and-run accidents and drive off in this county. Yes. Because they, well, if they get... Even if they do stop without this program, can they still be de deported anyway? No. So if you, if we go your way, will we have less hit and run accidents in this county, or you know, I am can't. I making any? Well, and you're right. I'm not going to say that. But let's say someone, uh, an immigrant, has a hit and run. His first offense hits you, runs the scene because he doesn't have a driver's license, doesn't have insurance, possibly. Well, they can't get a driver's license if they're uh, undocumented. So he leaves the scene because he's afraid. There's a lot of them out there driving around. Well, they're afraid. They go to jail. Why deport them? If it's just that type of a minor incident. Well, some if could it was say they're already, they booked a lot of come here. And, uh, all right, so you break up their families. What do you do? Breaks the federal law. Breaks the federal law. Federal law. Well, like the sheriff says, if you get elected, uh, you've already taken the oath. We're he you're right. We're here to, to hold the, we're laws to hold of the, the state States. of Texas, and we don't need to be doing the federal government's job, though. Now, if they tell me, let me, if, the, if, if ICE tells me, as sheriff, no, you have to retain them, you have no choice, then yes. But I know that's not the case. But did you just say it's not mandatory? That's a request? No, you missed what I said. You said that it was a request. It is a request, but you just missed what I said. I said if ICE came back and said, and it wasn't a request, and said that it's mandatory. If they ordered you, in other words. They, I have to hold them. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to hold them. I'm just going to let them go because it's a federal law and I'm going to uphold the law. But it's not a law. You've got that wrong. It's not a law. Okay. It's a request. Okay. Well, I guess that's uh, an issue that the voters are going to have to do further research and uh, come up with their own conclusions on that. Yeah, uh, there, there's more to the sheriff's office than ICE, but yeah. ICE is, uh, I know a lot it, of people it, talk to me about it, and that's one of their major things. Well, uh, one of the other things that, in regards to that particular issue, like... Yeah, we still got some with, time. When, so. we, when we spoke with, the, with Sheriff Hamilton, I, again, I'm speaking as LULAC, is that we also shared with the sheriff that LULEX also taken a preventive measure, okay, in the sense that uh, with the immigrant community and educating them and letting them know the laws of the United States so they won't arrive at the juncture where they get, arre to where <coughs> they get arrested. Uh, and that in itself will also help the overall issue. Uh, obviously, if you don't have a license, well, you, you can't be driving, and if you drive, you, you're taking a, you're risk, taking a risk, whether you're undocumented <laughs> or documented. Uh, so, 
if we were to, uh, so that's that's the other part the balance if you will in addressing this one whole issue and uh, you know Sheriff Hamilton has been very very open and candid with us as to you know uh, the way he operates uh, the, the the jail in regards to this particular issue but again it's going to be the voters and they're the ones that need to educate themselves on this issue and uh, and weigh in on that whenever that election date comes around well, I can have a really hard time with this if they're, if they're driving without a license and they're in the country illegally, <coughs> even if they got their family here. I know a lot of people on my side of the aisle will say, call ICE. Uh, that's one way to solve that problem. Well, if they're driving, if they don't have a license, they don't have insurance. Yeah, but one of the things you need to understand, and I'm pretty sure APE is the same way, when we go to a call, we don't ask you where you're from. We don't Anymore? even care. We're there to address the issue. And, and the, the question or the, the uh, uh, question about where you're born, that only happens in the jail. What and now we've got secure communities, which every uh, jail in the country has to be on board by 2013. Every country in the, I mean, every, every jail in the country. Okay, okay. but so if an illegal college <coughs> says they've been robbed, they can do that without threat of right. being... No problem. No problem. I, I, I well, know for a fact the Travis County Sheriff's Office is not going to ask you, and I know that Chief APD Acevedo is not going to go for that either. Well, then what's the, the problem? In other words, well, you don't have to worry about ICE until you actually wind up in, booked into the county Once you're booked, there you go. Once you're booked, that's when the issue be that's, that's when it becomes Well, then the issue a, a of issue. them being scared to call the cops should be null and void. But they don't know that. And well, that's the thing. And the fear has been Sheriff, placed. question well, out there? I know, uh, we get, do got a small studio audience. I know they want to well, ask a question. Let, let me just finish. Hold up, Rick. Hold let, on. let me just finish with this. Uh, that's the other reason why Lulac asked the sheriff uh, to do the education part and go out to, to the communities in the rural, especially in the rural areas, uh, and we would help in facilitating and getting people to these forums so that we, they can be educated that uh, if, you, if you go this route, well, these are the consequences. Uh, that way, uh, and on they the know other ahead hand, of time. You can't call the police, or and you can't call the police without and, fear. And the sheriff's department, Mr. Hamilton, has already mentioned to us that if an undocumented person observes a crime, and he he Feel or she's free a to witness, call, don't worry about it. free field to call, and they will protect them and and also help in pursuing uh, the what is it that uh, you visa. The visa, in U order, visa. if in I've case I've signed three U visas this past week, in case they need weeks. to come to court, and I think that's the oh, part. So that could encourage them, you would think, if they witness a crime, they can get a visa. Well, no, they got to. It's more to it than that. But <laughs> it's <laughs> more, <laughs> more to it than that. Uh, but if they're a victim of a crime. Oh, okay. But but the other thing is is we we've taken it even further than that. Uh, um, I've had an opportunity to go to the interfaith ministry, which is a uh, a collaboration of churches white black hispanic and i spoke at the the place off of old torf old torf the big church off of old San torf. Jose. yes I, I spoke over there to i, I guess it was about three or four hundred people uh, there to talk about that that uh, uh <coughs> we're not here to arrest i mean send everybody back and matter of fact i want you to know that travis county sheriff's office do not have the authority to deport anybody n uh, at all so unless they get booked in that's it. That's it. But on top of that, the other thing is no we put together a, a group. Matter of fact, we've had two trainings where uh, members of the interfaith ministry, and we did started this two and a half years ago, uh, members of the interfaith ministry uh, had talked about uh, individuals being concerned and scared to report uh, violation of racial profiling by the local law enforcement. Over at Travis County Sheriff's Office, what we have worked with is a liaison from the church that will be the ones that come to us and give us the information and uh, we will look into that information and then go out and if we find that our officers <coughs> violated some type of policy we will go and address that particular issue and we, we have a process set up where my major that's over over this program because he's part of the interfaith ministry they will go out and, and uh, talk with the law enforcement agency that we found wrongdoing to, to them and address that particular issue. Sound okay, Lulac? Can, can, I want to address something to begin Please do. So what you're saying is that, and this is what I gather, is that <coughs> you're going to educate the undocumented workers on how not to get arrested. So you okay. know, as well as I do, that <coughs> hundreds are going to get arrested 
for minor violations. So you're saying it's okay to deport them? No, I'm not saying it's okay to deport them. That's what, what I heard. No, what I'm saying is that if they know the law and they're educated and they know uh, what, you know, if they do certain things and, and that they're breaking the law, then <coughs> they won't go there is what I'm trying to say. And I understand the teacher. That, that, that's what I'm trying to say. What about the majority and what about the lot of, a lot of them that are in jail for minor violations? Are we to retain well, them to deport, to tear up families, to to, to uh, uh, send the fathers back and have motherless, uh, fatherless children here, to have our taxes raised and pay high taxes because social service and still create a mistrust for the police? No, what I'm saying, my, my position is that uh, to begin with is that you shouldn't be asked where you're born is more where do you exactly. live exactly that and to me well, that takes care yeah, of it i, I can know. agree with the shit in the jails that's just something well, for maladate they do not, right uh, he to says find it, out. Uh, 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 do classes to show them how not to get thrown in jail which means don't commit those minor violations well, i agree with the classes what I kind mean, of minor violations program. are we talking it's about a program well you know you're stopped because your lights were were off yeah you know we're off misdemeanor theft misdemeanor well, driving around or misdemeanor theft or uh, uh, now i know that top line I, know, or something? I know that before uh if people were stopped for those minor violations they could be you know if he's e got a either, driver's either license either he won't a ticket, just get a or, ticket. That's right. and if you're booked you know you're once you're identified or or whatnot you present your release uh but yeah. now you have this 48 hour and then again if I know uh, several people that are that have residencies are U.S. citizens, but when you're asked where you were born, well, they have to say, "I was born in Canada, but uh, I've been a U.S. citizen for the last 40 years." Yeah, but, but the still, born doesn't do it. The, yeah. the born no. doesn't do it. No. The, the the fingerprints. The fingerprints. No, no, no. no. I, I'm talking about once they're once they're booked. That, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. Once they're booked, the fingerprint is is where they are are uh, caught up in the net. Uh, it, it's not it's not the question. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah. Hold on, I know, I know. If I get arrested and I can't prove who I am, I don't get out till they know who I am. They will run my fingerprints, and well, I true. better have and something come out. That's so. the way it should be. I mean, you <laughs> should run fingerprints on everybody and send them to the FBI. Yes, I mean, we have to identify people. And if they, if he gets a, a no tail light, he's got no license, no insurance. And yeah, but the other thing is, is no, that no uh, uh, identification. Uh, two cases that that just occurred. We had one guy who. Um, had been um, uh, a fugitive for 13 years. He's changed. Oftentimes, we get individuals in our jail to give us different names every time they come in there. We had a fugitive that came in, that was arrested on a minor charge in our jail. Gave us another name. The secured communities went through. He was wanted for murder in uh, Hidalgo County. The sheriff calls and says that one of the things we're going to do is start sending all our folks up there because y'all will catch them. Uh, we just had a, a, a guy from. Uh, uh, Florida, who committed murder in Florida, who was arrested on a minor charge, and the secured communities caught him in that. We also had individuals, uh, and it, it was an attorney who had called, who had called over to the sheriff's office and had called for me uh, because we had an individual in our jail who was an American citizen, but had used his cousin's name, who was here illegally, and didn't know that he had any any type of uh, any type of uh, warrant. And um, he gave his cousin's name, that name hit, and we were able to uh, identify him correctly. Uh, well, we knew that he wasn't this guy because of his fingerprint. And, and so secure communities work both ways. Yeah, uh, it sense to me. I want to say something, and I do commend the, the sheriff for that, but is that two out of 300? What well, those are just two that I know of. What about the rest of them that are deported for minor violations? I am with him on sending the fingerprints to the FBI and identifying purpose because you're right. There are people that may be arrested for a misdemeanor theft that are wanted Turn for out to be. But once that request comes back and they're <coughs> just a minor violator, they need to be released and not detained. Okay. okay. Hold on here, Rick Luna. We're going to take a phone call real quick, right, I think, if, right. the, if it works. Call number one, you're coming on the air. All right. Uh, <coughs> Sheriff Hamilton, at what point in your career did you decide to embrace ICE? Say that one more time. But to what point in your career did you decide to embrace ICE? And ICE is part of the jail. So uh, when I became sheriff, I had to ab abide by the law. Was that part of your campaign when you were running? ICE? Yeah. Was that part of your campaign when you were running for office? No, sir. Okay. Now, uh, what about those families, disruptive families? Is there anything that your sheriff office does to 
make sure that those people have services that they need in the interim? I couldn't get the question. Uh, should you hear it? Is there anything the Sheriff's Department does to help those families that are left behind when somebody gets deported? Sir, I don't think sir, that's sir. much of a Sheriff's Department job, but I'll ask you anyway. No, sir. Anything else? Uh, no, that's about it. Just that uh, it doesn't seem fair or just to uh, incarcerate people because they're working, they're looking for work, and because uh, they're treated worse in their home country. But okay. I, I've got something to say on that one. All right. uh, as, as far as these individuals, I'm just the keeper of the jail. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I can tell you that uh, we have 27 agencies that bring all of the inmates, the people that they arrest, to my jail. And, and I, it's, it's not my doing. I'm, I'm the keeper of the jail. Okay, Kyler? Yes, you don't have to keep it so neatly, though. <laughs> Thank you, Kyler. What? Uh, one more caller. Uh, go ahead. This is Mr. Customer. Mr. Customer, go ahead. Hey, guys. How's it going? Great show. Thank you. Hey, Sheriff, Sheriff Hamilton, I just want to tell you, you're doing a great job. Um, I'll definitely vote for you again. I have ever since you've taken office. Um, all I know is APD guys, not saying that this one's one, but they don't tell the truth a lot of the times. Uh, I like how you're standing up for the truth here. Uh, you definitely have my vote. I appreciate all that you do. Thank you so much. And uh, and I know that your staff really, really does appreciate you. Is there a question in here somewhere? No, no, I just wanted to say oh. that, uh, how much I appreciate Hamilton. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. And, and, and on that note, I have to say thank you for letting the Spike TV crew come in and do their show, Jail, because it really opens up to see some of the inside yeah, things going it does. on in, in your thing. And I want to thank you. Oh, yeah, that's that. right. Uh, he always goes crazy because I watch jail. And, 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 and then your jail comes and, up. And they come yeah. in there, and, you know, your people are really, really good to, to the prisoners and stuff. You know, they, they do what they have to do. But I, I like seeing that, you know, you open up the jail to let the It was kind of an education for me, too, uh, getting thrown in jail because uh -oh. I didn't realize how much y'all had to put up with. Yeah, how much fun it was. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, like Joe well, Tello Jones. Guys, a anyway. You guys in there are very, come off as being very professional. Yeah, they did. Rick Luna. Rick Luna. Come on up there, Rick. Rick Luna has a question. Yeah. Uh, Make it quick. Because uh, there's a lot of other things to go over. Go ahead. Come in here. I know that Chief Hamilton should be working more intensive um, of these uh, MR people. That are uh, MHMR? Yes. Uh, I've noticed that the, um, the, the <coughs> jail does not really create some kind of, a, of environment, a better, clean environment for them. And uh, to me, okay. it's, it's just like... Uh, I will ask so both these what? candidates how they'd handle MHMR. Also, they should have a, you know, it's, it's a revolving door. For MHMR. Uh, I mean, my son went to jail a month, five times in one month. That was a revolving door. Nobody can uh, intervene. Nobody came to, to, to you know, to, hey. So is that the sheriff's department or MHMR? Well, the sheriff's, have department, the sheriff's <coughs> department has, MH, my understanding, has MHMR workers there. Is that correct? They visit the jail, yes. Well, they, well, I well it's, they, it's MHMR come over to the jail to do, do counseling services. Uh, uh, Abraham Wattis? Abraham, no, that's not ours. Abraham is one of the supervisors at MHMR. Okay, so that was with him because a lot of times you put you the, my, my, son, my son's in, in lockdown for 30 days. I mean, well, is there a question in all this? Yes, they're not. No, me, I, I know Rick is a great guy, I know. To me, I'm, I'm not seeing them being handled the way they should, you know. I mean, I, I've seen uh, well. I've seen dogs being treated. <laughs> okay, well, we'll ask the chef. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, take that. No, I'm, I'm not going get to in, get into his particular case. But, Thank you, Rick. Um, well, but one of the things I can tell you about Travis County Sheriff's yeah. Office, uh, we have 400 uh uh, uh, mentally ill people a day. We average that a day in our jail. We have one and a half psychiatrists. And, and the this, this state hospital has 236 beds. They've got 20 psychiatrists over at the <coughs> state hospital. Uh, so I'm, I want you to look at that ratio. But I can tell you at the same time... I'm already stunned. I, I can tell you at the same time that, that these individuals in our jail get very good service from that one and a half and the counselors that we have. The incident that he's talking about, he's made this personal. 
uh, yeah. right now, and uh, I'm not going to talk about him and That's his son's very good. Deal, right. But it's more to it than he said. Yeah, okay. Um, before I, I ask for your opinion, how do you determine if they're MHMR? What do you mean? You said we have 400 in there we, we have, well, and one and a half psychiatrists. There's a, there's a screening when you come in. Yeah. And then from the screening, they go to the nurse's station. The nurse's station, they go to a counselor. Our counselors will go in and uh, ask those, those pointed questions. Uh, a lot of them are dictated by Texas Commission on Jail Standards, who regulates our jail. And he talks about the cleanliness. We have passed our, our jail standards inspection every year uh and you I'm were cleaner than bastrop county we are very clean we, we're very clean uh in our jail but at the same time those individuals will determine whether or not this individual is mentally ill and then we are also tied in to the mhmr central texas there's a record there so okay if so you can history, find out anyway yes sir but we average 400 a day 10 four man uh, mr S S S uh -uh. well and he's right but there, there's got to be some sort of a diversion for the mental health before they go to jail, and I'm sure the sheriff has, has tried that as well. There is a diversion right now. Okay. There's a diversion court. I'm sorry to interrupt. Diversion you. No, no, court. No, that's fine. And there's, but that is a big problem that has that has to be addressed as well. I, I met with uh, one of the directors from uh, uh, the Austin State Hospital the other day, and uh, that was a very big concern of theirs too, of adequate treatment and whether there's enough medical personnel now. You know, I don't know if it's the commissioner's court that doesn't want to fund the money for it, but I think more money should be funded for the jail to put mental health uh, workers in there, people that have the experience and also train the deputies <coughs> on mental health issues and how to treat them even better. Okay. That was, was going to be my, my question to the sheriff, knowing that there is that number. That they're that high number. Yeah, I can, that high uh, number? Is, is, does <laughs> that, has <laughs> that... Has that not justified going to the commissioner's court and asking for additional staff, or <laughs> have do. you done it and yeah, been denied? Do. Yeah, we have. Okay. We have. And, and, and we, every one of our officers are, uh, have mental health training. Every one of them are mental health. Go ahead, Tyler. Corrections yeah. and right. uh, Come on up here. Come on, you, 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 right you, you want to take right. the telephone first? Okay. <coughs> Come on up here. Yeah, I was just going to ask, uh, other than ICE, what would you do differently than Sheriff Hamilton? Okay, another thing I would do differently is I would diversify the ranks. There's 11 positions appointed by the sheriff. It is not, it doesn't reflect the community equally. There's one black male, there's two females, there's eight white males on his staff. If I'm not mistaken, according to reading the bios of it, four of them played college football with them or played at the same time. I was going to get to there that There needs too, to be diversity within those ranks to reflect the community equally. Well, I was, of course, was, we're gonna ask, we'll take this column, but I was, of course, going to ask, and if he hired them, they must be qualified. Uh, but we'll get on to that yeah. in a minute. Go ahead, caller. Hi, um, I could agree with the uh, diversification, but I would like to say, Sheriff Hoffman, you've done a better job than I've seen. I've lived here all my life, 40 years, and um, it's been a while since we've had somebody who, um, I guess, <coughs> doesn't doesn't hide behind the whole ethnic deal, and you're a man of race. So I think that's really cool. And also, just to show that, obviously, we're not getting enough MHMR help, because when somebody works there, has their own son run through it and and can't stop that then we're way short on that and that just speaks to the whole problem a lot of homeless people are clogging up our system and we need as you say another uh, a, what was it diversification court just not not to plug them out you know those guys need something else and we're we're plugging up jails where uh, you know other people need to be there thank you and i agree with you i, th I think that uh, uh we have to do something different as, as far as uh, jail uh and i think that uh, education is one of those things i think we not just the individuals uh, that are immigrants i think that we need to to get out into the community and get more involved hey up the phone ball i'm sorry sir go ahead and, and and i think that that if you look at travis county uh, we are we are extremely involved in the community in all aspects of the community in the schools uh, at the Austin's Children's Shelter World for Children um, uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters Meals on Wheels I can just keep on going matter of fact I had two speeches today at at the different schools to to uh, talk about the kids no matter where you come from you still can make it and uh, sir 
Well, you know, he talks about building bridges in the community. What about the bridges that he's breaking down with brick by brick? Especially the minority community, the immigrant Are we into community. ICE again? Well, we're into the, uh, the immigrant community, and there's, all, there's not just Hispanics. There's Asians, there's Can Canadians, there's a bunch of people that it's just being torn down. And well, I understand I'll he's done a good job with the outreach programs, but my point is, what about the ones that he's tearing down? Well, again, I'm, I'm not tearing down anything. Um, I, I do not deport anybody. I know uh, you I, don't I, deport. I just do my job. You, but you have a say-so who gets deported or not because you no, have I the don't. choice of retaining them or not. No, I don't. Okay. No, I don't. All right, Sheriff, you thank you. Uh, uh, we do need to move on to some other things. You, made, you have made some accusations here, sir. He uses unfair promotion practice favoring his college football or school buddies and refuses community input. This is on your website. Yes, sir. Uh, that, that's John just going around throwing stuff, see what sticks. Okay, uh, what I've got one guy that, uh, that uh, has been at the sheriff's office 20-something years, and, and uh, he played football with me. One guy on the, on the, uh, on the deal. Well, so I read I the see. bios and four play college football at the same time. I guess they didn't know each other. Uh, can you pull the, those, those bios? Uh. And I bet you he's wrong. I don't know if I had that kind of computer skills okay. or not. But but after yeah. after the show, okay. after the show, go back and pull, and it's not four of them that and play football. And also with community input. Are they qualified? Yeah, they're qualified. They're doing well. As far as community input, before this program with immigration, now he says ICE has always been in the jail, but I I viewed the commissioner's court dated February twenty fifth, two thousand eight. And what I was hearing is that they were asking him, why are you giving them space in the jail, that we have better utilization of that space than letting ICE have it. Now, I'm not saying they have their own office with ICE written on it. I am, I am still a peace officer. I made an arrest five months ago. ICE was in the jail with their yellow jackets, just standing there waiting for people to come in. So Be what, are you going to kick them out? Before, can I answer this? Yeah. Before, as a policeman for 30 years, ICE has always had accessibility to the jail. They, they have not been in the jail. When, when an immigrant was arrested, a report was either routed to them, and I think now they have like an IDEX button where the report is routed to immigration. They're they were notified of someone being in the jail. Then they would make, they'd make a decision whether to come and interview that person or not. 1999, Margot Frazier came up with a uh, written agreement with immigration, but closed circuit TV, so ICE would not have to be in the jail all the time. They could do the closed circuit TVs. In 2009, ICE went to the jail. Why is this, a, and this is a big uproar with citizens, why did the citizens make such a big issue about this, and why wasn't the community asked first? And in the forums that he had with the community, people asked for his resignation. They asked him, what are you going to do about it? And he says, nothing. Now, I read this in American Statesman. I don't know if they're a liar or not. Uh, uh, yeah, they are. Okay. Um, there goes John. He just, he, he tends to just throw things out there. He said that there was closed circuit uh, 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 video with, yes, the, with ICE. They signed that lease, I mean, they signed that agreement, uh, but it never happened. They never had closed circuit. <coughs> but weren't so you passing you get that, that agreement around? At That's why I'm, 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 I let them know that the commissioners had already, at one point in time, the commissioners were acting like they didn't know, did not know that, that ICE was in the jail during that meeting that you talked about. ICE do not, I mean, never had that closed circuit deal inside the deal. They signed it and the equipment was never never used in the jail. Well, what about the and then the seven th then and then the, the flip side of that is that uh, he says that ICE has never been in the jail. Don't believe him, don't believe me. Call Judge Perkins and he will tell you back in seventy five when he was a judge, a justice of the peace, that That's ICE right. ICE was in the jail. Well, I, I didn't start till seventy eight but then No no they but were you just fine. but you just said that. So you say in '75 they were housed in the jail with an officer. Yeah, I thought anything. you were there when when uh, they were. What? Well, that's what you just said. They no, were I said jail. that they were in the jail. Well, okay, define in the jail. Coming to the jail. Coming well, to the jail. That's what I just Visit. said. Accessibility to the jail. Yes, yes. Okay. In '75. In well, 75. I, I know you, you said that uh, the, he didn't go to the community, but I remember going there to off Airport Boulevard, where a lot of people there, and ICE. We had an ICE agent was there. If you recall, when was that? It was shortly thereafter. Uh, he's just. That's been stuff quite a few years now. But I know, I know he did go to the community, and I know there's a lot of the community does support strict enforcement of our immigration laws in Travis County Jail. They'll say, like I did, if, if you wind up being booked into Travis County Jail, there must be some reason for it. Well, and you, if you're here illegally, 
And, and there are some, but you're not going to find many Democrats that are going to agree with that. No. The caring of families and deporting uh, hu husbands away from the father and, and, and so forth. And that will put a so strain on. on the social system, I suppose. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's the Democrats that are going to get a vote you on the... piece of candy? Yeah, uh, the Democrats that are going to vote on the, uh, in the primaries... Well, I guess the, the bottom line <coughs> issue on this whole, uh, uh, the, you know, ISIS, the, the nature of the... Don't get uh, caught! <laughs> no, well, uh, the severeness and, and the nature of the arrest. We've got and, and And like like John mentioned, you know, for example, if no driver's license. You get yeah. booked, you're taken. Take a bus if you ain't got no license. No, but if that is a whole lot different than someone... An, an illegal uh, immigrant murdering somebody. There's a big, big difference. Yeah. So, and, and again, the confusion of about the policy or a mandate and whether it's discretionary. I think that uh, <coughs> there definitely needs to be a whole lot more education. And again, the voters are the ones that are going to make that right. final decision. Did, okay. Did you know that if, if you took all the immigrants from Texas, <laughs> Texas would lose $69.5 billion of revenue? No, I didn't. And I and that, that packet I gave you, that's the research. Not done by me, but several immigrant attorneys. Hey, let's talk about some uh, other things that we're doing in, at, over at the sheriff's department. Yeah, there's a more to the sheriff's department than... Uh, go ahead. Well, um, I'm, I'm excited that uh, first time ever in the history of Travis County Sheriff's Office, we have our own range. We used to go out to to other places. To and, the and trailer park shooting range out there. Used to go, it was bad. It was terrible. Matter of fact, when I first came on, we had, I went out to the place where my officers were shooting, and uh, I walked down this little crickety bridge, <laughs> crickety bridge and to get over to where we were going, and just before you reach where the sh officers were shooting, there were people out here drinking beer and shooting guns out here at this range. Damn and I it. said that we have to get out of, out of this place. <coughs> and so uh, that was one range. of the things that I I said that, that I would do when I first came on was, was that I was going to work hard to uh, find a location uh, for a, a range. And um, we went to the commissioner's court. They had already uh, put aside $250,000, which wouldn't even buy the slab uh, on the most part. No, it wouldn't. Uh, so, so, uh, and that money had been sitting there for three years before I became sheriff. And um, uh, so I went to Congress and talked with Lloyd Doggett and a couple of other folks and they encumbered us some money uh, and we instead of going out trying to buy land uh, we found an area in, on, on our property out in Dell Valley and right now we have 14, uh, 14 lanes where our officers can go out and, and shoot 25 yards and and it's not just for our officers I open it up to the constables I'll open it up to any of these Central Texas law enforcement agencies uh, that do not have have access to uh, uh, with, without paying Want to uh, respond to that? Because yeah. I also, we've asked about this before. I disagree with it because I've talked to my constable chief and they said Sheriff's Department won't let us use the range. So we have to go out to Lockhart and use Lockhart PD's range. But, but you have to consider the source, uh, his, his, his constable in chief that said no, that. Yeah, we've had the constable's, constable's on. And and no, the constable's no, the constable's office. office have been out there. So if we called you and asked you if we no, could don't use call your me. Range. You called my. You oh, called then the they'll let us use your range. From yeah, there. I believe if, Richard if McCain's been it, out yes, there before. We don't use it that often, yeah. huh? Richard well, McCain said he's been out there before. Two that. years, and he's he's a <coughs> constable for. That's his constable. That's his constable. That's that he just McCain's said man. Uh, well, I work for him. I mean, yeah. Well, well, I have a question. Why, why Sheriff White? that I know that, that I'm glad to well, hear that. I think that. he that's said, yeah, he's been out there. No, that's good of you to do that. Right, but he he told you that that not him. I just. My sergeants and everybody, and that's why I've been using lock our lanes. But my information is wrong, so I've asked you. And Maybe. I thank you for your information. Maybe yes. I might have heard it wrong. He might have just let him out there. So I don't know. No, he just no, said no, he no, use no, it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Before you got another question, okay. though, I would All like right. to stop for for a minute here because okay. uh, the, the sheriff's department does have a, a SWAT team, and I know they need to be trained properly. And APD has some really nice facilities out there. Any chance of? I mean, you say 25 yards, this is just take your pistol out and practice. Yeah, but we also go to uh, uh, Bass, Bass Drop and shoot that for long range. Oh, uh, out at Camp Swift? At Camp Swift, yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. Go ahead. Well, my question is, well, to both of them, but in a different way. Uh, Sheriff, will you educate us and, and our viewing uh, audiences to why uh, you would 
you want to continue being sheriff and what is it that you will deliver in your next uh, administration that would be different or better uh, to convince the voters that you should continue being sheriff? And then the follow-up question to John is, why do you feel you're, you need to run to sheriff uh, and convince the voters of why that reason is? Yeah, we've got uh, eight minutes left. So well, well, first of all, I, I think over the last eight years that, that you've seen a level of professionalism. You've seen it rise over at, at Travis County Sheriff's Office. You have seen individuals that come to work that love to work. I know that there are some people who probably don't. You know, the, uh, there, there is always going to be that, that small group that, uh, that are discontent. Uh, but on the most part, I can tell you that, that morale is, is, is high. And I can tell you also that, that uh, we have made some, we, we are pretty progressive over at the Sheriff's Office. I know that when I was at the Sheriff's Office the first time, oftentimes we look around to see what APD is doing as far as technology and all of that. Now, for instance, the MDCs and our, our uh, uh, cameras in the car, uh, uh, the e-citation we are starting to lead as far as in, in, in the technology field. Uh, I think that, that we're extremely progressive. I don't think that's just because of me. I think it's because of the people that I've surrounded myself with. <coughs> I'm excited. He talked about diversity. We have the first female ch uh, uh, major over law enforcement in the history of Travis County Sheriff's Office. First female. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to brag about that. Uh, but, but we are in, in the community. We are uh, showing folks in the community that we believe that, that uh, uh, in order for us to address issues, that we're going to have to do it together. And that's why I know that he'll probably bring up immigration. But we have sat at the table. I've sat with you. I've sat with several other people. And when I couldn't make it, my, my staff was there to hear their concerns. Uh, and we will continue. We will continue to, to conversate and address those particular issues. I think we've got a lot, to, a, a lot more going. I have brought in uh, some of the best training uh, that, that Austin has seen. As far as uh, I, I am the second vice president of the FBI uh, LIDA Association, and in May I'll move to first vice president, and if I'm blessed and fortunate, the following year I will be the president over the FBI, FBI LIDA, which is a training, leadership training. I just got selected one of 32 people. They do it three times a year. I thought it was twice. They do it three times a year. Uh, they select uh, law enforcement leaders from around the world. I was one of 32 that was selected to go to this FBI training, paid for by FBI train, uh, by FBI, and I'm bringing all of this, all of the folks that I've met, the instructors there, I'm bringing them back so that my officers can get a little taste of what I got out there. Because one of the things you need to understand, 60% of the folks that work at Travis County Sheriff's Office can retire <coughs> within the next three to five years. My turn? Yes. All right. <coughs> well, as your sheriff, that's one of the first things I want to do is look at the secure communities. And I'm not going to retain people for minor violations, for misdemeanor violations. I'm going to focus on the felons, the serious criminals, like I just explained to you. He says he can't do it. It can be done. And I'm going to definitely do it. And I'm going to definitely try it. Because Obama's already backed off. He's already said that they are already backlogged with minor violations and 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 undocumented workers being detained for minor violations that they want to focus on the felons, the serious criminals, the violent criminals. And I want to respond to him. That he is not only the keeper of that jail, he is the sheriff, one of the most powerful positions in Travis County. He can choose who comes in and out of his jail. He can give anybody an office that he wants, and he has the decision to retain or not. Another thing is that I want to diversify within the ranks, of course. I want to put more deputies on the street. And I want to look into the jail and the mental health situation. I just think with this ICE thing, families are being broken up, and there's no reason for it. The citizens, people should not be afraid to live in Austin or to drive around just because they're undocumented. Travis County has the highest rate of deportations in the United States of non-criminals, people with no criminal histories. It's in the American Statesman. LULAC has told me about it. ACLU has come up with these research. And I want to respond to him. I don't just get on the internet like some three-year-old child and say, oh, I found this. I'm gonna go. I do my research through people, attorneys, lawyers, important people that give me this information. I don't just get on the internet at home and play on my computer. That's where I'm getting my stats. Eighty-two percent of the inmates uh, deported in Travis County are for non-criminal non violations and have no criminal histories. That needs to be changed. 
I, I got one more thing. So. Yeah, we could. We uh, got a we got a couple minutes, so take two well, more minutes. It's, it's important uh, that that y'all realize and look at the date of this article that Tony Plahiski looked at a study. I've got the real numbers, and they're coming out. So he's going to have to flip the script on using that same lingo all the time because those numbers aren't right. Yeah, but you've been saying that I've since got right the article 50%. coming up with no, the, not, uh, not, uh, This was 2010. This is about a year and a half after you were reelected. Right. And, and so you've got no problem with illegals driving around? If they get stopped, they should get a ticket and treat it like everybody else. With no driver's license? If uh, they're put in jail, they shouldn't be deported. They should go through the system like everybody else. Just get a ticket and front. turn them back out. That's right. Treat them like working class citizens that they are. And we're not only talking about here. On the immigration community, and it's not just strictly Mexicans. You have Yeah, Chinese, I understand that part, but right, the vast Vietnamese majority are. And well, uh, and I'll give uh, you the numbers. What my research and the lawyer's research is 51% of the uh, immigrants in, in Travis County are illegal. Hispanic. 25 are Asian. About seven are Nigerian, Indian. and about seven or eight are Canadian and stuff. So you're right. There's a variety of immigrants in this Travis County. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, again, from LULAC's perspective, I think that the uh, mental, the MSMR situation and having yeah. that many within the uh, the jail population uh, is a, a, a serious issue. And, and Sheriff, in any way that we can help you as LULAC, convincing the commissioner's courts for additional staffing for that because at the end of the day, there's there's still human beings. And, That's and, right. And uh, That's the, the county jail throughout the country is the number one state right. hospital mental health facility. Right. We know we've had cuts at the state level that have shut down beds at the high state hospital. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a circle, you know. You, you, you fix one and then it contributes to the other. So, uh, but uh, it was nice to have these gentlemen and uh, I commend them for the courage to put their themselves uh, out there before the voters. Because let me tell you, having worked for an elected official, it's, it's not a very safe and, and paved road, you know. Uh, and uh, especially your, your, their families, your families that, that uh, allow you to serve our community. Because there are a lot of times where I'm pretty sure that y'all don't see your families because of your dedication and commitment to your work. Yeah, there is a lot, lot to run. Uh, we only got about a minute left. There's a, there's a lot to run in the, sher the sheriff's office Absolutely. besides the immigration. And we didn't get to talk about transnational gangs that are coming into town. I understand there's plenty of them. And you're right. It is, uh, and just to get people to run for office right. is hard. Uh, and I know on my side of the, the thing, a lot of people would support Sheriff Hamilton because of his stance on the uh, on the ICE issue. But you're right. I can just, I can see both sides. You take off the daddy, and then you wind up with Mama down there with the uh, food stamps. And it, it also affects the schools because now yes. there are dropouts at school. So uh, we're also wanting to look and uh, and work in addressing once that does occur. How what what is that safety net if there's any? Yeah, uh, all right, we got 30 seconds left. Thank Say you. Goodnight. Thank you for uh, having us, and I would like to ask the the viewers to. Uh, I would like to ask them for their support. And I would like to ask for your support either. Uh, all, also, and let's change things in Travis County. All right. And don't forget March the 1st, Thursday uh, at the Millennium. Yeah, come on down. It's the Democrat candidate meet thing. Uh, I'll probably be the only Republican there. Come on down. Anyway, good night, folks, and stay tuned here to, to the uh, channel.